voters in the UK have cast their ballots in the general election. Polling stations have just closed and we'll be bringing you the results of the exit poll shortly. It's a representative snapshot of the vote across the UK, taken from a key selection of different constituencies. The poll usually gives an accurate estimate of the final result. In the run-up to the election, the opposition Labour Party was set for a landslide victory and the governing Conservatives were predicted to suffer major losses. The Liberal Democrats, led by Ed Davey, have been setting their sights on big gains, with Nigel Farage's populist reform party looking to enter Parliament for the first time. This election has been held against the backdrop of a cost-of-living crisis in the UK. People are concerned about the economy, the National Health Service and other infrastructure. Let's hear from some voters. I think my hope for this election is for there to be more stability in the country. Uh, I'd like to see um, a strong victory, I think, today, uh, so that there's more certainty about what, what the future holds yeah, after this election. I think nothing has gone well in the last 14 years. And I think it's really important that the right result happens. I suspect tomorrow is not going to be as enlightening as I'd like. I think it'll probably be more similar, not different enough for my taste. Change. We need change. Um, I'm not going to pass judgment on the incumbent government, but I think we need change. We really do need change. Joining us now from London is DW correspondent Charlotte Chelson Pill. So, Charlotte, any news about the exit poll numbers? Yeah, Big Ben just behind me here in Westminster's just chimed 10 p.m. local time. Polls have closed and those exit numbers, the projections for how this election is expected to unfold have just come in. And what we're seeing is an absolute landslide for the centre-left Conservative Party and a shocking result for the governing centre-right uh, Labour Party and a shocking result for the centre-right Conservative Party. The results that we're seeing coming Come in showing 410 seats for the Labour Party. That's uh, versus 131 seats for uh, for the Conservative Party. Uh, reform there, the anti-immigration party. It's showing 13 seats. That is a, a surprise result there. Uh, that is uh, not uh, wasn't expected among a lot of polls, and and is showing a surge in support for them. So big results here, absolute uh, landslide for the Labour Party. Some projections had suggested that it could be the biggest majority uh, for the Labour Party in their history. If this exit poll translates into the final results, that uh, doesn't look like it will happen. They'll just fall short. Nevertheless, an astonishing night. So it does sound like the voters in England got the change they were looking for. So what does this mean for the Conservatives? How big of a defeat is it for them? Yeah, this is an enormous loss. Cast your mind back just to the last election in 2019 under Boris Johnson. Uh, the Conservative Party had a significant majority. Now that's been all but decimated. This is looking like it could be the worst result in their history. There will certainly be some soul searching for the Conservative Party. Now, it's not as bad as some of the earlier polls had projected, but perhaps even some suggesting they could dip below three figures. According to this exit poll, that's not going to happen. It has them on 131 seats. Nevertheless, a lot of people will be fearing that this could send them into an electoral oblivion for some time. So why exactly are the numbers looking so good for Labour and so bad for the Conservatives? I mean, they were ruling for some uh, one and a half decades. The Conservatives have been in power for 14 years. There will some who say that after 14 years, uh, people will be hungry for change. But the last parliament in particular, the last few years, has seen uh, the Conservative Party's reputation plummet. There were scandals during COVID called so-called party gate, uh, where politicians were accused of flouting some of the COVID rules that were put in place. Then, of course, there was the disastrous premiership of Liz Truss and the financial implications of that. All of that has combined to uh, 
catastrophically affect the popularity of the Conservative Party. Uh, many people saying this election is more about voting the Conservative Party out than the Labour Party uh, in. A lot of people that I have spoken to uh, on the streets ahead of this election weren't particularly excited about the Labour Party. Indeed, the party's leader, Sir Keir Starmer, doesn't have massively uh, huge uh, favourable popularity uh, ratings. Many people saying that this was more a vote about getting the Tories out. So the Labour Party will certainly have a lot of challenges, despite the fact that this, these exit polls are showing a huge landslide. That doesn't necessarily mean that the mood of the public, the excitement of the public uh, is behind them. And that certainly is going to be something that they're going to have to address, uh, assuming that these, do, uh, these results are correct and they do form the next government. All right, so if what you're saying is correct, this is more of a protest vo vote against the Conservatives, but that kind of begs the question, where exactly is the Reform Party in all of this? They've been trying to gain seats in Parliament at the uh, cost of the Conservatives for some time now. That's right. Both the centrist Liberal Democrats and the Anti-Immigration Reform Party have both been taking votes from the Conservative Party. 13 seats for them is significant. And there are a number of reasons for that. First of all, uh, one of the architects of Brexit, a famous figure here in British politics, Nigel Farage, uh, changed his mind and in a surprise decision decided he was going to take charge of Reform Party, the Reform Party just last month. He uh, has, is a popular figure among, uh, among some. Uh, there is also the fact that, uh, the, that after Brexit, uh, many were voting to control immigration. We've seen in recent years that migration figures have hit record highs. So some questioning uh, whether or not Brexit delivered for them and now turning to this anti-immigration reform party. What is certain is this will be a huge boost for them. And while it might just be 13 seats, what you'll have to look at that's projected, what you'll have to look at is the percentage of the vote that reform uh, get, how large that is, because certainly Nigel Farage, the leader of that party, has been saying that they are not just looking at this election, they're looking at the next one, perhaps uh, bringing in some disillusioned Conservatives. They are really hoping that this could be the start of something for them. Before we get a, uh, take a look ahead at the next election, let's take a look back at the campaign we just saw. How exactly did Labour promise to differentiate itself from the Conservatives? Uh, one word, really, throughout the campaign, and that was change. They wanted to set themselves apart from the Conservatives. They had this narrative that the Conservative Party was one of chaos. They tried to present themselves as a party of stability and a party of change. And it does appear that that has been effective throughout the campaign. Now, this is a centre-left party. Some of the, the pledges that they've made throughout this is that they uh, will address the crumbling public services, the health service, particularly looking at waiting lists. It's under enormous pressure at the moment. Many people you'll speak to here will have a story about issues uh, with health care. That is one of their top priorities. They promise not to raise taxes. On issues like foreign policy, they've also uh, pledged to scrap the controversial Rwanda scheme, which was passed by the Conservative government, you cast your mind back after a lot of fighting. That was uh, brought into legislation to see some asylum seekers sent to Rwanda. That would be scrapped under a Labour government. These are the policies that they have been uh, talking about, addressing the top concerns of the public, immigration, uh, the economy and uh, the health service as well. And it's, it's for that reason that it appears uh, that they have, have been successful in this election. All right, quite an eventful night in the United Kingdom. That was DW Charlotte Chilson Pill in London reporting for us. Thank you very much. So who is the man who looks set to become the UK's next prime minister? Keir Starmer has one, had one of the top jobs in the legal profession before he switched to politics and quickly rose through the ranks of the Labour Party. Keir Starmer. He stands for change. That is Keir Starmer's main message. And for solid centre-left politics. Stability over chaos. Long term over short term. An end to the desperate era of gestures and gimmicks. And a return to the serious business of rebuilding our country. In the Prime Opinion polls show more Britons have a negative view of him than those who think he's doing well. But 
His ratings are better than those of his opponent, Rishi Sunak. Keir Starmer is the best hope that we've got of getting things back on track. I don't know what he quite stands for, to be honest with you. And uh, for me, I'm finding it very hard to connect with him. And I think he's a decent man. I think he's a good man. So, and I think he cares for this country. Very thoughtful lawyer. He's a lawyer. Starmer comes from a humble background, explains his biographer. Born into a working class family in the south of England, Starmer became the head of Britain's Crown Prosecution Service, earning him a knighthood. During the election campaign, he had to learn to show his human side, for example, revealing his passion for football. As a lawyer, you know, you don't express your feelings in court, it's all facts and evidence and legal points, not backstories and visions. And so he's had to learn these rather different skills, political skills, in the last nine years since he became an MP. His proposal for Britain not a grand master plan, not bold enough, say his critics. Instead, a series of economic and planning reforms, for example, to enable more house building. We will create a new industrial strategy, a choice ignored for 14 years. And we will back it with a national wealth fund. Invest in clean steel, new ports, gigafactories. During the Brexit referendum, Starmer had fought to stay in the EU. Now he wants to align the UK closer with the continent, doing, but cautiously, without doing. getting back into the single market. From you. It's not about rabbits out the hat, it's not about pantomime, we've had that. I'm running as a candidate to be Prime Minister, not a candidate to run the circus. Thank you very much, Beth. Diligently, like a lawyer, that's the way he wants to go about it. The big task of getting Britain's much. ailing economy back on track. And staying with our top story now, I'm joined by DW's reporter Craig Crowther in the studio. So, Craig, help us break, us break this down a little bit. We've just been seeing an incredibly turbulent time um, for the UK in general, just thinking about Brexit, the COVID pandemic. Um, can Labour really put an end to that uncertainty? Look, I think it's a mixed picture. One of the huge criticisms of um, the retail offer that Labour have been giving on the doorstep is that it's not radical enough, it's not revolutionary enough. But I think what they have been promising, the one word that Keir Starmer has been uh, parroting really throughout the election campaign, is change. They're promising to be the anti-chaos party and bring stability uh, back to government. So can they solve austerity? Perhaps not. They've said they won't put up taxes. Um, uh, can they solve the issue of Scotland? Uh, it looks like they won't need to, given uh, the fact that the Scottish National Party have just uh, 10 seats. But I think the real change that's going to be implemented, if Keir Starmer gets in, because at the moment these are just a projection and exit poll is a sense of stability and seriousness which does appear to have been lacking in the UK over the past, past five or six years. Well, you said a word there that I think is quite interesting. We've been hearing it time and time again in our reporting change. Why are the British people and the, the uh, citizens of the UK more broadly looking for change so precisely? <sighs> I think there's a few things. Firstly, I would say when any party's been in government for three terms, almost 15 years, there's a sense of fatigue with whoever's in power and the public are more likely to switch to the opposition. However, I don't think that explains this, what looks like a huge landslide majority akin to Tony Blair in 1997. I think that has come from a sense of anger, a sense of frustration, uh, with the public who just believe that those in power have not been behaving appropriately. It started with Boris Johnson and Partygate and continued under Liz Truss, who was there for just two short months and crashed the economy. And Keir, uh, uh, Rishi Sunak simply did not have um, the political acumen or the political capital to uh, uh, shear the stip, uh, uh, ship back in the right direction. Well, where does this leave the Reform Party? I mean, some people are saying that they could actually usurp the Conservatives long term, considering um, how little support that they're enjoying uh, among the, uh, the voters. Do you think that's uh, an accurate statement? Look, if we look at this um, exit poll, uh, Reform are predicted to get 13 seats. That will be a disappointment to Nigel Farage and his party. But the thing about Nigel Farage is he's a great communicator and always attracts uh, a lot of attention uh, from the media. So do I think there'll be a huge political force? No, but will there be a loud force? Absolutely. All right, and where does this exactly leave, um, or what does the new potential Labour government actually leave the UK when it comes to the EU? I mean, after Brexit, the relationship is so a little uncertain. 
Look, Keir Starmer has said throughout the campaign that they will try and uh, build a more positive relationship with our European partners, and I think that will happen. But just yesterday, he came out and he said categorically that the UK will not be rejoining the European Union um, in his lifetime. So do we expect better relations? Absolutely. Does it mean the UK will be rejoining? I don't think so. All right. And what about the Conservatives now? The Conservative Party of Britain has been called one of the most successful parties or political parties in the world. Uh, what exactly do you think is, is, you know, if you look into your crystal ball, could be their future? Uh, it's true. In the UK, the Conservatives are almost seen as the natural party of government. I really think it depends on what happens later this evening. A lot of the big political heavyweights potentially might be losing their seats. And then I think it depends what happens in the coming weeks and months. Do they tack back to the centre and become a party of the old Conservatives? Or are they dragged further to the right, trying to steal back those reform, reform voters and become more of an extremist party? So at the moment, I think it's really hard to say what will happen to the Conservative Party in the coming weeks, months and years. Well, they will certainly be exciting weeks, months and years. That was DW's Craig Crowther. Thank you very much for your analysis.